Oh, what there everyone's Matt Rosick, and I guess this will be a work in progress number one for the PK King Karen kit. So I initially not planned on doing any videos simply because um, videos slowed me way down. But I posted some figures, posted some photos of this guy last night, and I got a lot of a lot of response because, quite frankly, he's quite an amazing uh, kit. Well, the sculpt is amazing first, and the kit uh, overall is, is very good. So, um, as you can see, I have them all pinned together, and um, this is kind of one of those things where I was in my garage, I was kind of organizing stuff, and I was like, oh, I should pull the Kieran down and take a look at it. Maybe I'll work on it this year and have it ready for Winterfest. Well, that was Friday night, and now it's Monday night, it's pinned together. <laughs> so, my, um, I started pulling it out. I was like, man, I could, you know, I could work on this, start working on this now, and uh, hopefully have them done for Winterfest 2019. So, my plan is, this is November, haven't done in eight months, <laughs> which I think I can do. Um, so, you know, cause I'm doing mostly, I don't really don't do personal projects anymore. I do basically all commissions and, uh, prototypes and stuff. So, uh, yeah, now he's kind of bouncing on this turntable here. So I'm going to move around really slowly because if he was, were to fall, that'd be quite a nightmare. But, uh, this is a new, just a killer, killer piece. This is, uh, again by PK King. If you don't know who that is, I'll put a link down in the description to his, his website. Um, I want to say he's, I'm not going to say the country because we're going to get it wrong. Um, he's from Thailand, but I could be wrong. Maybe Korean. You'll, you'll find out in the, in, the, in the description. But he basically has this whole like uh, mythical story that he does these sculpts for. These are all original sculpts from his own kind of creation. Um, a lot of them are dragons. This is kind of like a four-legged dragon. And I don't know the story. There's a whole story right up of the story on the website on this, um, his backstory. So read it, and they'll kind of describe it. This is technically a th technically one eighth scale if you look at his website. So the figure is one eighth scale. Um, so I'm just trying to give you an overall view of this guy. Everything is on the kit right now except for just a few parts. Um, what I don't have on the kit right now are these. This is the knee armors and the shoulder and the elbow armors. Those will be glued in later. And I don't have the stirrups in because I think I have, these are um, some really cool, very highly detailed stirrups. And so those will go underneath his feet, obviously. I've got the chain on there because I thought I was going to try to put it in there, but there's no, this piece right here that attaches, there's no room for a pin. So this piece has to be epoxied in and then his feet go in. So that's going to be after, actually done after this is painted and he's painted and there'll be some kind of, hopefully everything lines up. <laughs> Um, and then the other piece that's on the kit is his little mask. Um, so this will, this can actually go on his face. And I think by, it kind of stays on there right now by itself. There's nowhere, there's no way to pin it or anything. So it's just, I think a pressure fit. So, uh, let's get some measurements over this and I'll come in and look at, um, then we'll kind of, I'll come in a little closer and go over the, the crazy detail on this piece. Uh, the kit's 105 pieces, um, all together, which seems like a lot, especially if you're a figure builder. But since I come from a Gundam background, 105 pieces is nothing. <laughs> That's like a, a fourth of a kit or a fifth of a kit. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot for a figure, but for sure. Um, so if we go from the front of the base, now this base isn't attached to him. The, he he kind of rests on this. I, I could actually pick him up and he's not attached to the base. So it's kind of a balancing act to get him to stand on this part and his hand on this guy right here. Um, so it's a little trick. You can kind of adjust them around. Um, but I'm going to, based on how I set them up here, if I go from the front of this to the back of his tail, it's right at about 26 inches deep. Now for the height, I'll go from the base of the turntable to the highest point, which is going to be the top of his horns. And that is right at uh, 17 and a half, maybe 18 inches. And the width, I have them on here, I have them on my bench just in the perfect spot where I can actually spin them around 360. The width is not too bad from the outside points of these guys. You're looking at about 15 inches. So he's a big piece. Um, incredibly detailed. Uh, the, the resin quality is some of the best I've worked with. There is some extremely fine details in some of these pieces, and I'll come in and show you especially on like this piece right here. Um, I can t actually take that off without having to take the head off. 
and I, I kept dropping it. And I, I mean, if this was cheap resin, that would have just shattered and those little tips would have gone everywhere. Um, I only have one crit and I'll get to that and you can probably see there's some broken spots on the kit and that's my crit. Um, but the resin, extremely high quality. It's, it's soft enough to sand really easily. It's very easy to like, um, I only had one part that was giving me a real fit fitting wise. And it's this big horn here. You can kind of see the gloss here. It's all that epoxy that's kind of oozed out. The only real putty work I have are, is on this head with the, where the horns, these horns didn't, they went in well, but they didn't fit quite well. So, um, I, I just, the, I spent the longest on this part, which is actually one of the simplest parts of the kit. Um, this part and this head, this head is very complicated with all the pieces that go into it. Um, but just getting these horns to fit was kind of, especially this one right here was kind of a nightmare. So at the end, I basically just kind of epoxied it in there and got it to fit as best I could. And I'll go back and I'll do the putty work. Um, but what I was saying about the resin quality is that um, I would drop like this piece right here or this piece right here. And if this was cheap resin, these little tips would just shatter off. But it's very pliable. A good resin, um, if you believe it or not, is actually soft. Good resin is, 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 a, soft, uh, is a softer resin. Brittle resin is, is cheap resin. If it's if you drop and it shatters, that's cheap resin. So and softer resin takes detail better. So the detail in this is unreal. Um, um, I'll show you instructions, and you'll his paint up of this is amazing. Um, there's another uh, there's another one I saw on Facebook. Um, actually saved the link. It's a whole work in progress from the pinning to the priming to the painting. Um, that I need to save, and if I can find the link, I saved it like a year, year and a half ago, because so I bought this kit back in 2015, um, before I was anywhere near confident in painting him. Um, I feel like I can hand, I, I feel like I can, ta I can tackle it now, <laughs> even though it's quite insane. Um, but there's a, if I, if I can find the work in progress for, uh, um, gallery, I'll put it in the description below. But you can go any way with this. Uh, PK King's paint up is amazing. Lots of warm tones um, and gold trim on the dragon. Same with the rider. Um, just really, really amazing. The clear resin is of a very high quality. Now the clear resin is is a, is a more brittle resin, but it's very clear. Um, if you're seeing any yellow, like there's a little bit of yellow in there, that's because you're seeing the brass rods that I use to uh, pin the tail together. So this tail is actually three separate pieces that sandwich together. Um, I can take it out. So the tail is uh, one, two, and a center piece sandwiched together. Those have been epoxied already. Some of this has been epoxied. I epoxied the tail together. I epoxied the arms on the rider. I epoxied the horns on this front head. Um, it's going to create a little more masking later on but it's better to do stuff like that where you know you're gonna have a lot of ooze out or you have a lot of clamping. I'd rather do that ahead of time and mask later than try to epoxy something that's been painted because once you get paint on, epoxy on paint, you're screwed. Um, you basically have to strip it and start over. Um, you'll never get it off because you have to use a, um, an acetone or uh, alcohol to get the epoxy off. Um, so yeah, so the clear resins of extremely high quality. Um, once you start painting and get some clear coat on there, it's going to clear up really, really nicely. And this tail's got a lot of weight to it, so eventually this will get epoxied onto this piece. Um, I mean, there's just so much detail on what to go over. Um, the, as far as the fit of the kit, like I said, everything was really, really fit excellent, except for the horns on this guy right here. He's got three horns on each side, one, two, and there's two small ones in the back. This one's been broken off. It's like where he's been stepped on. This one's broken because of packing and shipping. And I'll get to my one crit. My one crit on this kit was the packing of the kit. Um, I have the box over here, but I can't bring it over. It's too big. The box was beat to hell. It wasn't in another box. And the padding wasn't sufficient. So all these little tips broke off. Like on here. Um, I've got some others. On this broke off. And the pieces weren't in the box. So they fell out. Or I lost them as I was unpacking or something. So now I have to use my crappy sculpting skills and build a small little armature and try to re-sculpt these little pieces. Not, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but um, when you get a kit like this, and considering how much it costs, uh, the packing should be way better. I actually sent him a message as soon as I unpacked the kids, like, hey, I got your Kieran, it's amazing. Packing sucked, and I never, never heard back from him, which was really disappointing. So um, I have chatted with him in the past, but um, when it came to 
critiquing the packing. I never heard back from them. Um, as you can see, here, I have the chain kind of already in here underneath the, um, I don't know what you call this, the, um, the collar. <laughs> uh, I wish the chain was maybe two or three links a little bit longer. Um, I have um, I have the rider pinned where there are demarc demarcations in the in his bottom and the on the saddle where to pin them. So he's pinned there. I just think the chain could be maybe just a few links longer. I may ch I may replace it with the longer chain, but I do like the style of the chain. Um, what else? Um, I mean, you can see it's just freaking unreal. <laughs> it's a cool piece. So I'm gonna come in a little tighter. See if I can zoom in without losing any any uh, resolution. Because I'm, I'm on my cell phone. Uh, let's see. So let's look at the head a little bit here. Oops. Am I still recording? I am. Okay. I hit I hit something on accident. So here's the head. And actually, take I can actually take the head off. It comes off pretty. Soon. Oh no, I can't because I have the chain um, on his hand. Um, Let's do this. I'm actually going to zoom back out and I'll come in this way. Focus, yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry, I hit something and I stopped recording. So, now I get to do this the hard way. Uh, so, here's the head, insanely detailed. And like I said, like this little piece can come out right here. It's not in there. Real, it's got a little pin, but you can see how fragile it is. And I kept dropping it, and it never once uh, broke. So this will focus. Come on. There we go. And that goes right in there. I'll go over the instructions uh, here in a second. Uh, let's see. Where's the autofocus button? There it is. Out of focus. So there's the head. Uh, if we pan down a little bit, we can see kind of the detail on the legs. And these parts are a little tricky. Yeah, it took me a little while to figure, figure out how those fit in. Um, yeah, these are pinned. Um, these can come off so for painting. But these are a little tricky too. And also one of these were broken off. Um, this middle part was broken off. So I had to pin that and epoxy it, which was a little tricky. I'm going to come in and look at the rider. It's going to be tricky because I don't have me. Get my tripod down a little bit lower. It's hard. It's going to be hard to look at him while he's on the on this, but he's going to be a little bit lower. Sorry. I'm trying to get this. There we go. All right, so there we can see the rider. And I can try to put the mask on. I don't know if I can get my hand in there. It may just fall off, let's see. This little kind of helmet he's got on his head kind of helps keep it in place. I got, the, I got that helmet on just with some blue tack. There's a place to uh, pin it, but again, it's too small to actually put a pin in. I'm just going to take this off. There we go. And then put this back on. I love it with, the, um, with that face plate on. It's really cool. Again, it just may fall off. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> it kind of goes like that over his face. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you kind of get the idea. Uh, so yeah, that's looking cool. Uh, I'm just gonna take that off because it's gonna fall off and you can see his face. The sculpt on the face is beautiful. Um, it's real simple, kind of fairy-like. All his pieces are very kind of fairy. He's got a lot of fairies in his, in his uh, pieces. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna zoom out. Because the way this rider's, um, his outfit's insane, uh, just really cool. You have all these flowing pieces off the back right here. Now these three pieces have been epoxied into this back plate. These can come off right now, um, but these will get glued on eventually. I'm, I'm trying to decide 
how much of this to like do a final gluing on because I do want to take them to Wonderfest. Um, so I have to break, he'll about have to be able to break down to a certain point. Uh, my thoughts are I'll have the Kieran, which is the beast, all one piece. The head will come off and the tail will come off. The rider, um, I'll have the head removable and probably this back part. I'll probably have maybe these two pieces too. But um, in order to take this off, you have to take the shoulder armors off. So, <laughs> but how do you pack this? I don't, I wouldn't know how you would pack that without, um, just, it'd be really hard to do. But that's a cool view right there from the back. And then we'll come look at this side. I love all these horns coming off the back of his helmet. It it's, uh, uh, mimics the horns on the, on the dragon or the Kirin. It's really cool. And then we got his really sweet spear right here, which is, um, has a dragon head on it. So we're gonna spin this a little bit. It's got a dragon head with a clear hair coming off the backside and the spears coming out of the dragon's mouth. Again, it mimics the dragon head up there. That's just a really cool weapon. Look at this. I can come and look at this face a little bit, a little more here. And I've done most of the cleanup on it. Um, seam line, uh, mold line wise, there's very little. And what what little I see, it almost blends so well into his uh, the texture of, of the sculpt. Um, I may not have to do anything to him. There's only one that I've, so far I've really tried to get rid of, and it's on this front kind of shoulder right here. Um, you probably can't see because I've started to clean it up a little bit, but. Uh, mold line wise, there's not a whole lot to take care of. I keep pushing something. Oh, I see why. Uh, let's see what else can I talk about? I don't know. He's just really, it's actually so detailed. It's kind of hard to see what's going on in the video. <laughs> there's so much going on. Um, his newest sculpt out, which is called white tiger is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll get that eventually. The great thing about uh, P PK King is he doesn't have edition sizes. What he'll do is he'll um, he'll put a piece on pre-order, I think. Um, and I think he's got to get 20 to 25 orders. But if you pre-order, you get 10% off. And on these pieces, that's a big deal. This is um, this kit is uh, 850 bucks <laughs> shipped. So this guy's expensive. This is his most expensive piece. But, um, in my opinion, for the sculpt and the amount of resin you're getting, um, I think, I don't think it's too much to ask for, for that. Um, his white tiger is like 525 and it's beautiful. This tiger's like, I'll, I'll put a link. It's just, it's hard to describe his stuff. It's just so cool. So yeah, this is the, this is the PK King Kieran. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's just cool. Uh, I do want to show you the kind of the instructions and stuff because the really aren't instructions um, per se. Bring my camera over here off to the side. More of a checklist, and you kind of have to just kind of. Um, so I'm off to the side of my workbench here where I normally don't video. So you get um, what you get for paperwork is you get a black and white kind of like this thing it just has a picture of the of what I have right now pinned together uh Taiwan he's in Taiwan there you go that's why it's Taiwan I was wondering I, I, was, I knew it was in a country where recasting was uh, like terrible so I everyone's like don't ever buy anything from Taiwan well unless you're buying it from the original sculptor like PK King you're okay <laughs> but don't buy a PK King recast from Taiwan get the original um, and this stuff is so complicated. Recasting it would be a nightmare. Don't e and don't even play with that idea. That idea. Uh, and then in here you get a few um, uh, basic instructions where some of the stuff goes. Like this tells you where the stirrup goes. This tells you where those little um, like flowing hair things go. 
Um, one's supposed to go on one side because of the way it, it, it drapes. I've got, I've actually got it draping pretty good right there, according to his reference photo. The one on the on the PK King on the on the uh, Kieran's right side is a little funky. Uh, close up of how the the spearhead goes together. There's two teeth that were casted separately here. Uh, this is pointing at. I really have no. Oh, there's a. Um, I don't know what that is. I have no clue what that is. It's pointing to something. <laughs> no idea. And then this is that back piece where all that stuff is flowing off. So more than likely, I'll epoxy that all in one, uh, one piece and then make that removable. Um, and then you get a checklist for the parts. And the way they have the parts uh, laid out is these all go to the base. This goes all to the body. Legs. Uh, the head. The head, okay, the most complicated, the, the hardest parts of this kit to put together, I'd have to say, were um, the dragon head, the Kieran head, and I said, like I said, these three horns on this base, on this head, the legs fit really well, all these little detailed pieces fit in really well, um, these little things that hang down the front, they're a little tricky to kind of get to fit right, um, surprisingly, the rider, as many parts as there is, the fit is excellent, and it just, you pin it, and it goes together, so, uh, engineering on this is quite amazing, I was really happily surprised at, I don't want to say how easy it was to pin, but how quick I got it pinned together, I was expecting at least a week, and it took me, I spent, my son was homesick today, so I spent a good portion of the day, Friday night, and a little bit yesterday, so basically, I'd say 20 hours, a little over 20, 20 to 24 hours to pin them. Um, and then here's the color reference that they send in the kit. And this is the PK King's paint up of it. Um, and you can see, I just, and here's a good shot of the, the head width and without that, that mask on. Um, yeah, cool. It's really a phenomenal, phenomenal piece. So if you want to get an amazing sculpt, uh, a challenging piece to more more challenging to paint than really to put together uh, get yourself a PK King uh, kit um, I don't think you'll be uh, disappointed uh, I actually sent PK King a note last night sharing my the photos I, I, I uploaded last night say hey great kit just improve the packing <laughs> that was my I'll get my only crit so I've babbled on long enough about this piece, but um, like I said, it's it's pretty freaking cool. This is about the same size as, um, for all you statue guys, um, I do have a, a reference close by. I have a Xeon Art Flash piece right here that I've been kind of fiddling with a little bit. Yeah, let me see if I can move the Kieran without destroying them. Give me one second. He's on there bouncing on there actually pretty damn pretty damn well. It's engineering feet and how well he's balanced and how well he goes together. All right, here's a quarter scale flash to give you a sense of size for all you statue guys. About the same size as a quarter as a quarter scale um, flash in a running pose, I guess is a good reference size so there you go all right that's the pk king kieran uh get one <laughs> they're awesome uh as always thanks for watching this is matt rosick catch you guys later bye